taking the wrong plugs out. In both heat range and design. percent two percent four percent so I just did a leak down test on all of the cylinders even though I'm going to be tearing the whole thing down to clean and repair other damage I wanted to know where I stood with heads and ring seal. And as far as that's concerned, it was great. No issues there. Uh, so I don't expect to find anything weird as far as piston wear or cylinder head issues. Look at these, way too long. So the use of silicone on this engine never ends. This was on the oil pressure switch which usually has a crush washer. You don't need half a tube of silicone. Yep. And we have more loose silicone floating around in the pressure feed pipe going to the turbine. Big piece right there. Oh yeah, see how the thread's pulling out too? So that's the main pressure fitting going up to dirty feed oil up to the turbine. So dirty. someone crimped it in the vise and then had to sand it. Oop. Thrust washers are gone. Top pushing feels okay. Well, at least there's no goo in the non-restrictor. But at least it looks like they tried. Put some wonderful, some kind of silicone sealant on there. Still gooey. That's oil. Okay, so when I undid the bolt on this pipe over on the tinware, it sprung back with so much force. But this one, it's just finger tight. So they didn't even tighten it when they put it on. And it's kind of in the wrong place. I think it's the wrong one. It looks like the standard Carrera one, not the turbo one. three hours to remove the heaters with exhaust manifolds. Silicone 
silicone all around that o-ring. This just doesn't need it. Why do it? So some pretty significant wear starting to show up on these. Um, need to polish them and see where they're at. Definite bushing wear, I can see that in there. But we'll have to measure everything. Pretty much rocker shafts are all done. See bearing transfer on this shaft where it ran dry. You just see better days. Another lobe, number two. Exhaust lobe is definitely done. Bearings don't look the greatest either. Oh, not necessary. Not necessary. Silicone, you see oil here, oil around the tubes here leaking. Looks like a leak out from here, this area. This is silicone. Yeah. So this oil return tube was barely in there. I mean, when I touched it, it was like sitting here. And there's so much silicone and goop around it. I mean, it's going to take me hours to clean all of this stuff out. Valves seem a little deep, especially on that intake. Okay, here is a good sign of why we don't use silicone here. This is just ready to sheet off inside the engine. Something like that comes off and you are done. And these are a copper ceiling ring. They don't need anything. Oh, there it is. Heads are stamped point two five under. And it looks like they've only got a standard shim in there to begin with. Nasty. So the other thing you want to watch when you put rings in is not to line the gaps up because that helps blow by. Normally you want these 180 degrees out from each other. But that's how I just pulled the barrel off and that's what it looks like. Same thing on the next one. At least it's kind of stuck to the barrel. Cylinders don't look horrible. Had good leak downs too. Oh yeah, see that one's already separated. Just sitting there waiting to work its way out and plop into your engine. Look at it.
awesome stuff. This thing's starting to look horrible. I need to measure everything. Hey, at least the rings were somewhat separated. One there, one there. So not to hop on about the silicone, but everywhere we look, there's nice big flaps. And then this nice booger right here. Awesome stuff. So the cam on the other side, the four through six, is actually in worse shape than the one through three, especially cylinder number five. It's burned a, a lip into the camshaft where it's wearing the lobe off. And you can also see the burnt oil on cylinder number uh, six as well. You can see where it's burning up on that lobe. The rockers that came out on this side too were particularly bad. They were actually scalloped on cylinder five. It was scalloped on the rocker and there is a considerable wear. That's pretty much always from lack of lubrication and overheating. Oh yeah, look at that. Big old book of snot. Look at that one. Yeah. Just waiting to break off. Weird looking. Just like it's got a bunch of dirt on it or something. But the O-rings rock hard. So it looks like when they did it, they didn't even pull the thermostat, which is great, because otherwise it'd be covered in silicone. Doesn't look horrible. Safety valve has already been updated. Oh, that's had some crap go through it. Look at the edge of the piston. See all the scores on it? Yeah. Definitely had some metal running through there. We got the updated plug. It's supposed to be a stick but not using the updated spring and guide. So they did half it and the updated piston. I'd say they were not lubricated when they were put in. Why? Because they were all so squished and glued. Oh yeah, exactly as I thought. Mm -hmm. Look at it. So one of the reasons why number eight bearings leak is because whoever did this, they use 574 
right sealant, wrong application, doesn't need it on the O-ring. And this vent tube here, which is supposed to allow the O-ring to vent oil back out, is plugged solid. Plus, you can see how much they put on. It was just overbearing amount. On top of every stud. Yeah, it stuck to all the studs. Everything was just too much. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look back here. That's some serious sludge. Just too much 574. A little bit of intermediate shaft wear on that bearing. Mm. And this is what was really screwing with me. These O-rings that were put in dry as a bone couldn't move. And they're all shredded too. Yeah, this is also bad here. You can see we've got this huge, there's so much 574 used to assemble this that it actually went hard, which it's not supposed to do. It's too much for the engine to wash away into the oil. It's already got the late model oil pump, unless it's time traveling, because it's 1988 in a 76 car, plus it's got the screen attached. So not as bad as it could be in here at first glance. Uh, crank doesn't look too horrible. Uh, I can see some micro scoring, so that's probably gonna need a polish and a, and a remeasure. But the next step is to get the last of the case apart. Got a lot of cleaning ahead of myself because there's so much 574 on here. I mean, it's just sheeting off. This is like a whole tube they've used. And uh, need to pull all the studs, buff them, probably replate them just because they're out. Look at our mating surfaces. It's like we might have had some case shuffling right here, some evidence of wear on the webs. But we'll get everything cleaned up and start measuring, and now the real work begins. All right, so I just lifted the case, uh, crank out of the case, and same thing. You can see all these little dots. This is little bits of debris that's gone through the bearing. Uh, this one's pretty pronounced where something really sharp has gone through this journal. You can see the score right there. I can feel it with my fingers, quite noticeable. But one good thing that I'm looking at is I'm not seeing weird wear patterns across all of the bearings. So that's usually a pretty good indication that the tunnel is going to be straight. Now, still means I'm going to measure it, still means I'm going to check it, but it just gives me clues to what's going on structurally inside the case. So with the engine completely apart, we can see there's been two different assemblers over time with this or in recent history. We got the guys that did the cylinder heads uh, and it's kind of one extreme to the other. Uh, the guys that did the case really overdid it with the Loctite 574. This is the number eight bearing. I mean, there is so much of it in there. It's got to even change the crush of the case. A lot of evidence of debris, which we already knew going into it, going through bearings. I saved one of the main bearings for the owner. Uh, crank does not look horrible. Looks like someone's put some money into rods at some point in its previous life. The rods look like they've been balanced. They got ARP rod bolts in them. Uh, kind of neither here nor there for me. ARP makes a good bolt, but so does Porsche. Uh, so the next steps for us is get everything cleaned up and realistically Probably a good solid week of cleaning and measuring, especially with pulling all the case studs out, cleaning all of this so I can actually bolt it together and make sure it's still straight. Measuring cranks, washing, uh, we got heads, we got to pull down a couple of heads and a quick look. It looks like the intake valves might be sitting too deep. Not sure right now because they got a bunch of carbon on them, but just looking at it from the outside and having looked at one or two valves in my career, they look like they're deep, but we'll have to measure that and uh, a lot more work ahead. <laughs>